So there are a lot of new faces around here from the past few weeks. And if that's you, welcome. I'm Bella May and I sew things. My past few videos have kind of been full of me in front of the camera talking and not actually sewing anything. And I think it's about time that we actually sew something because that is what I do. I don't just make videos, I make videos about sewing. And about the sewing topic, I am making a sixth Cinderella ball gown replica, if you missed that somehow in the past few weeks. The previous five have gone to customers around the world, but this sixth one is for me. And so I am including all the details that I have learned over the years in this sixth replica, and I'm taking you all along with me on this journey. And we are going to focus on some other parts of the costume that I've never really made before for customers. And you might not even make it if you're making it for yourself, but they are, I believe, just as important and just as fun to make as the actual costume. And that's the undergarments. So the corset and the crinoline are vastly important to the costume. So those are not two things that I'm talking about that I missed on my customers' dresses. The ones I'm referring to are very specifically underwear. And one of them is a chemise and the second one, bloomers. So first off, a chemise is a historical undergarment that is worn under the corset to protect your corset from your oils and your skin and dirtiness. And it's just kind of a good undergarment to have. Sometimes historical movie dramas tend to forget about this thing and wear the corset on their bare skin, which is kind of weird and yeah. Though the chemise did not go unnoticed in this film, thanks to this article, we know that Lily James did wear one. Anyway, a chemise, I think, is just as important as having a corset, just because it's clean and you can also make it really pretty, which is fun. But since this isn't a historical project, I don't necessarily need to make a chemise. I could just wear an undershirt or something like that under my corset. But I kind of have fallen in love with making chemises. When you're making them for a costume, you can kind of design it and construct it in a way that matches the character of the costume you're making. The chemise isn't something you usually see, like the actual one that was worn with the dress in the movie or whatever. It's something that you kind of just have to design on your own and have fun with it. And so that's why I really like making these undergarments because they aren't a replica of anything. They're just something that I can be creative on because everything else down the line will be very much to a T replica of what I'm trying to replicate. So another thing that's important for historical costuming is a thing called drawers. Now drawers are different than bloomers. You might not know the difference and honestly I don't know the exact specific definition of bloomers versus drawers. But the best way I can think of describing it is one, drawers are made to be as underwear, like as you would think of underwear today. They were worn as underwear. Bloomers are do not replace underwear. Bloomers are a pair of pant type things that you wear under a skirt and it will help you save you from embarrassing moments. So bloomers do not replace underwear, whereas drawers were underwear back then. So that is a good distinction between the two. Now for this project, I am making bloomers. So they aren't going to be drawers, they're not gonna replace underwear, they are not gonna be split drawers, and they're bloomers. So the bloomers are again something that you don't really see in the actual Cinderella dress, whatever she wore underneath. And so again, I get to get kind of creative with it. Now for the design of these two undergarments, the chemise and bloomers, I just spent some time on Pinterest looking at different designs and the 1920s really drew my eye as far as the design and style of these two undergarments. And this actually fits quite well with this project because Sandy Powell, the designer of the Cinderella movie, she based her inspiration on the 19th century, but also with a 1950s and 40s flair to it. So of course that's the 40s and 50s, not the 20s, but it's like the same similar idea, kind of, at least in my brain, it kind of adds up and makes sense. So there's a few specific drawings of undergarments from the 1920s that I really liked, and I decided to kind of base it off of that, but also just get creative. 
So with that, we're actually gonna go make the thing. So first off, I wanted to come up with a good design for the chemise. Now, as I was playing with the fabric, it seemed like triangles were something I was kept coming back to. And yes, I actually meant triangles. There's been a couple times that I say triangle when I mean a rectangle. Who knows where that comes from? But this time I actually mean a triangle, a three-sided object. So triangles just seemed interesting and quirky and a good fit for this chemise. So I decided on that. I cut out some rough triangle pieces about what I could use. I ended up with four of them and then I went on to picking some trim. This is a trim that I got when I was in LA in 2018 and it was quite dirty when I got it and so I knew I needed to do something with it to mask the dirt stain spots. I got it really cheap. I grabbed that trim and then I decided why not dye the chemise? The 1920s is where you actually start seeing chemises or maybe you could start calling them slips are now colored. They're not just white. And I think this was kind of interesting. So I felt like the Cinderella dress was a good project to have a non-white undergarment. I picked a robin's egg blue dye to dye both the fabric and the trim. The embroidery on the trim is cotton. The netting that the embroidery is on is not, so that will not dye, but that's okay. I just want the embroidery part to dye. So the dyeing process began, and as I was pouring water into the pot, and of course I wanted to get a creative shot of the water pouring into the pot. Yeah. That just happened. My camera fell into the water. And it's not waterproof. It's not a GoPro. It's a Canon. And it was expensive. And it fell right into the water. Because my nice little stand that I kind of makeshift put it on gave way and let the camera slide into the water. <laughs> expensive expensive dye mistake, I guess, right? So it is currently getting repaired or it might have to not get repaired because it's ended up being extremely expensive to do that. A mistake. So guys, don't try to film creative shots when you're dealing with water. Just don't do it. Or at least make sure you have a really, really secure connection between your camera and your stand. So anyway, exciting things. This project is off to a great start. Anyway, after that little disaster and the rest of the day pretty much shot, I finally got back to dying and I did film some creative shots with water again, but it wasn't as risky as the first one. I dyed square pieces of fabric and then I cut them in half to create four triangles. And now I assembled them based on my pattern, which you can actually purchase at the link that will pop up and it's in the description. But the seams between all these triangles, I used French seams. And then at the front, I've got this kind of quirky connection between the different triangle points. Overall, it's a pretty unique pattern, but I really like how the bias fall of the triangles and the placement of them turned out. By the way, this whole body of the chemise is triangles. There's no other shape or cut into the triangles. They're just triangles. And so after I got those pieces sewn together, I now went and placed my trim. 
this is where I'm going to start cutting away a little bit at that top triangle. I decided to go pretty easy on how I applied this lace. I am just laying the lace on top of the fabric and then I'm using a zigzag stitch right on top of the edge of the lace. And after I sewed this in place, I then cut away this netting as close as I could get to my zigzag stitch. Because this edge of the lace is quite thick, I felt like the zigzag stitch was going to hold it all in place quite well, and so I trimmed very close with that netting. But then at the back, I trimmed about a quarter inch away from the sewn edge. After I got the lace sewn in place, I then went on to the straps. I'm just using a straight cut of fabric, got it sewn together and then turned out so it creates a little tubing. I got the four straps sewn in place, two in front and two in back, and then at the top of the shoulder, I tie them both together in a bow. This is because the ball gown has very off the shoulder straps. So because of that, I decided to make straps, but make them sort of removable. So once I have my corset on and everything else on, I can just untie the straps and let them fall under the bodice. With the hem of the chemise, I was kind of going back and forth whether or not I wanted to leave it all different angled and the drapey look, but in the end I decided I wanted to trim it level just so it would be less messy looking maybe. I'm not sure, but overall I think it was a good decision to trim it off. And then I did a hand sewn rolled hem for finishing that bottom edge. With the chemise complete, we can now go on to the bloomers. So again, I was going for the 1920s style design with these, and the specific picture caught my attention and I kind of liked the style of it. I'm going to go a little bit longer than the picture. So with that, I drew up a quick little diagram of what my pattern piece would need to look like to achieve that shape. Not very specific in this drawing, just playing around with what the pattern might need to look like to create the shape. After drawing out that little diagram, I went ahead and traced it in full scale form on my pattern paper. I decided to not make a mock-up of this just because I knew the basic shape it needed to be and I made it a little larger just so I could take in some adjustments and such. So I cut out a slightly larger version of what I needed to look like out of the actual fabric. And then I played around with that one leg of the bloomers and fixed a couple fit issues. After that, I could then go out and cut out the second leg of the bloomers and then get it all assembled together. For the bloomers, I am using the same type of trim as I did for the chemise, but I'm not going to dye the bloomers. I decided white would be better. So to get rid of some of the stains and dirt of the trim, I am using a little bleach to bleach it and hopefully get rid of some of those stains. For a little extra flair for the bloomers, I decided to put darts along the hip and I'm doing five of them on each one and each one is a little bit longer than the previous one. So for these darts, I kind of just did it by eye when I sewed it, not very specific, but if you choose to purchase the pattern for these, they'll be very clearly marked so you don't have to do that eyeballing it. After the darts are sewn, I'm now going to sew the bloomers all together. First off, I'm creating a circle basically out of each leg. 
After I get these two seams sewn, and I'm using French seams by the way, I now can connect the two legs of the bloomers. On this edge, I decided to serge it. A French seam just didn't seem like it would work very well around the curve of the seam, and so I just decided to do a serge. And of course, I needed to remember to leave an opening at the back of this seam, so I did not sew all the way around. After I got the serged, I then finished that opening that I had left. After that, I went on to the waistband. I decided to just bind that edge with bias cut binding, and I left ties at the back. I decided to just have ties for my bloomers and not have to worry about clasps or anything like that. Along the lower edge of each of the bloomer legs, I am placing my trim. I am placing it the same way as I did with the chemise. And with that, we have a completed chemise and bloomers. So you can order the patterns for both of these undergarments on my website. The link will pop up and then there'll be one in the description as well. You can buy just the chemise pattern or just the bloomers pattern, or if you get both, you get a little discount. Anyway, you can find those links. And if you choose to purchase, I hope you enjoy making them. It was a fun process to design them and just get kind of creative with the trim and the style. And I think they turned out to have a nice Cinderella touch to them. So I'm pretty happy with that. And thank you guys for watching the process of making these undergarments. A huge thank you to the patrons who have made this project and all the future projects to come possible. They make this channel possible. So thank you patrons. Thank you for your support and everything. And if you want to find more information about that, the link will pop up and there will be a link in the description. And with that, go out into your own sewing area and learn, create, and inspire. And I will see you next week with another video. I'm an angel. Or maybe a fairy godmother. <laughs>